when you finally did make your debut in ECW, kind of what was the program that re, that you were in? Did you, did they just bring you in, or what was kind of the, the build up to yeah, it? Yeah. Uh, so literally one day I'm down in FCW in development, and they're like, "Okay, you're going on the road this week." I'm like, "Okay, cool." So it was like me, Seamus, uh, I think Yoshi Tatsu <laughs> was one of us. Um, it was Drew. I don't think Drew McIntyre was with us. I think he was already doing house shows and stuff. But there were like three or four of us that got brought up simultaneously. We were just doing dark matches forever and then one night Carano pulls us into his office like the four of us I don't even remember who the fourth person was which is that's I'm terrible but he goes okay so y'all debuting tonight we're like what <laughs> like yeah you're on tv we're like wait I've never even had a dark match he's like well here's the ball roll with it don't effing drop it I'm like ah, okay <laughs> they called it the new superstar initiative and remember uh Tyron Terrell was like the announcer at that time for that stuff and it was just um I got shoved out there in a match with Zack Ryder and uh, I love I love Matt he's amazing we still talk he's super mm -hmm. cool and he was more than willing to help me which was you know it's rare usually like so many debuts you just step all over him but Matt Zack was like he was so cool well, I had Noble as my producer, Jamie Noble. And I think we had like eight minutes to start. I'm like, oh, this is great. This is cool. So we planned a, a really cool debut match. You know, I got my stuff in and then clock's ticking. We're getting close to showtime. And then it goes from eight minutes and Noble goes, okay, well, we lost a minute. I'm like, okay, cool. No big deal. And then uh, Zach's like, well, we'll just cut this out. Or we'll, you know, we'll cut the entrance short. And Noble comes back 10 minutes later. He's like, oh, I lost another minute. So now we're at six. Another minute. Now we're at five. <laughs> another minute. Chris, we got down three minutes. Wow. For your debut. <laughs> three minutes with entrances for my debut match. <laughs> <laughs> like that was, that was mind boggling to me. And so like, I had to do the whole thing where I come out in front of the crowd. I look at the lights. I have no idea. Like I'm all, this, I was shocked. I'm like, oh my God, this, there's a lot of people. There's a lot of lights. Am I going to fall off the stage? I'm going to miss the ramp. Like all that went through my head, but. We had a good match. It was fun for three minutes. You know, if you can call that a good match. And weren't you kind of like uh like a surfer type of, of a thing? Is that what the gimmick was? Oh, yeah, they had me as like the surfer guy. <laughs> like it was my own idea. I thought it I thought it fit. It was really kind of lame if you want to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a California kid, right? I was, yeah. Yeah, born and raised. So did you ever surf? I did. I spent many years uh when I okay. moved to Southern California. I lived there for six or seven years. I surfed two or three times a day. So it wasn't, it wasn't too far off then. You could actually like live the part of being the surfer guy. Oh yeah. That's the whole reason I had the dreadlocks in the first place. Cause it was just part of like the surf community. So mm -hmm. I was just doing my thing surfing and that's how they found me. So continue forward just as we're going through your WWE years. I mean, you had your debut and did, did you, were you in ECW for a long time? Cause I remember you being on raw for, for a while. I remember you teaming yeah. with like Hawkins and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 Hawkins is great. Yeah. I was on ECW. Um, I don't remember when I got taken off. It wasn't too long. <laughs> it didn't take long for them to realize that this isn't working. And, uh, I, you know, what happened is they're like, all right, well, they didn't say anything. They just pulled me off. <laughs> and then right. Arn comes to me one day, Anderson, and he's like, he's like, so uh, Tyler, you know, <laughs> he's like, I forget, like, they can't see stuff. Arn does a little hand thing because right, right. his neck surgery. Yeah. And he's like, so they want you to be a heel. I'm like, okay, I've never done that and like never once had i ever had a match as a heel even on like my year my long year and a half of training <laughs> like i never once had a match as a heel so they had me work with arn and fit and noble for like eight months trying to figure out who i could be what i could do and just kind of develop my character and then they had me start doing dark matches i was like the dark match guy at mm -hmm. the time like every, every SmackDown, every Raw, it was like I was doing the dark match. And so they put me on loops, on the house show loops. So I started to kind of learn a little bit. I did a lot of matches with Chavo, with Christian. Um, Chavo was such a huge help, too. He was mm. amazing. It's great Worked training, Chavo yeah. a lot. Like yeah. a lot, a lot. But that was fun. Um, and then they shut me out on SmackDown one day. It was right before Bragging Rights. And remember Caval? Remember Loki? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I forgot he was called Caval. Yeah. yeah. You're like, who? Like, look. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I don't know. He had some heat at the time, I think. And uh, I think they pulled him off. It was an NXT thing. And they're just like, he's not going to the pay-per-view. And from what I heard, Vince is in this production meeting with everybody. And he's like, oh, what are you guys doing with Tyler Rex? And like the way Arden said it, he's like the whole like room just got silent. Everybody kind of looks around and they're like, uh, nothing. <laughs> And Vince goes, oh, well, he's on tonight, you know? And they're like, 
oh, okay. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's like, I just got shoved out. I stomped Caval, and then I, next thing I know, I'm in bragging rights. I'm all, okay, well, I guess that's how it happens. So you actually were in the bragging rights. And bragging rights was when they had, I think it was like Raw versus SmackDown. Yeah. And you had to wear the matching shirts and all. It was five on five. So you actually were on the SmackDown team. I was, yeah. I was uh, Del Rio's team, Alberto Del Rio. So that was that was really cool, like, to be alongside all those guys. Out of nowhere, just the guys I'd kind of seen and, you know, acquaintances. Mm -hmm. you know, guys like, you know, Mysterio and Jomo and all those guys. I'm like, wow, this is fun. So did, when you kind of got put in that position, like how did you do in bragging rights that night? Obviously you said thrown into the fire. Did you, did you respond? Did you? Yeah. Oh, I, I think I did fantastic. Arn thought I did great. Fit thought I did great. Noble thought I did great. Everybody I worked with said phenomenal. I actually, it's funny. I've been looking for a good clip of it to kind of like repost because I'll, you know, I do a lot of stuff on TikTok and right. like the before and afters, there's just like, they're just mind boggling. Like I said, even to me, I'm like, God, that was me at one time. Uh, and I've been looking for those clips because I remember <laughs> in bragging rights, like I started with Santino. I think I opened the match to be, I think Santino opened with somebody else, eliminated him. And then I got in, did a little song and dance with Santino, eliminated him. And then Jomo and I went for like a minute or two, which was mm -hmm. really fun. Uh, and then I hit something on Miz at one point too. So uh, everybody just, you know, congratulated me, said great job. And I, yeah, it all went downhill from there though. <laughs> <laughs> so wh why do you feel that like what, what happened afterwards to, to so that? i had a, i had a little push i was kind of riding the wave and what they had told me they said you know just be quiet be this like luminous like ominous character don't say anything i just go out there and let the crowd wonder and just beat the crap out of people and so i did that um I think a lot of it came, though, from me not really knowing who I was at the time. And not, like, with what's happening with me now, but just not being super confident mm -hmm. in myself. I, I thought I was confident, but, like, in FCW, we've been told, to like, shut our mouth. Don't talk to anybody. You do what the vets say. Right. Like, it was this whole, like, I'm, like be scared of your job mentality. Mm -hmm. And so I was scared to try stuff. I, and I, I doubted myself. I had 10 different people telling me what to do. Um, mm -hmm. I think I was actually listening the podcast with Trent just now before uh, before he came on, he kind of said something similar. He's like, you had told him to do something and then somebody else told him to do something. Right. And it's like, you're getting pulled in 10 different directions and you instantly make an enemy if you don't do something. And I just, I didn't have enough experience. If I had, you know, if I had been in the Indies, if I had been through this before, like if I were to go back, which I, I can't, I'm just, my neck's all messed up. My back's messed up. But if I were to go back for any reason and me being, you know, what I am now and who I am now, it's kind of weird, but <laughs> it would be a totally different story. Like I'm so confident in who I am. Right. Like, I would, I would, you can hand me a mic. I could talk to 10,000 people, no problem. And entertain them for as long as I need to. It's not a problem. Back mm. then, I remember very specifically, it was like pre, it might've been pre bragging rights or something. I had never been on raw. I was on SmackDown. So I didn't know like what happened during the commercial breaks. And we're all like team SmackDown and team raw. We're on the apron on the ground. And they're passing around a mic to like punk and edge. And I'm just like, I remember thinking to myself, I'm like, oh dear God, don't give me that. Mic. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, that is like the nail in the coffin for any wrestler. Like, yeah. don't give me that mic. I'm like, I was petrified. I'm mm -hmm. like, I don't even know what my, I don't know what to say. Like, I think that was my downfall. It was like, I just did not know how to embrace that character. And nobody was there to help me. I don't blame anybody, but myself.